Hi, hi, hi. It's Mrs. Stitches or Sheila. Uh, Sheila in BC still. Uh, the date today is January 31st, 2024. And so tomorrow, obviously, is the next month. So I'm going to be doing um, some more finishes. Uh, so I'm going to show you today the finish I got since I last talked to you, um, I also did two 24 hours, or I attempted to do two 24 hours of cross stitching and got some progress done. And uh, what I've been working on, uh, which I think, I don't know, no, I don't think it includes any new starts. It, well, sort of, there is a project I'm going to show you that is a new start. So let's get at it. So let me start off with my seventh finish. Oh, first I'm going to show you the project that I have started. So you may or may not know if you've been with me before, but I am trying to do 60 finishes in 2024. And so part of that I thought would be fun is to actually keep track of my finishes with a cross stitch. <laughs> So this is the cross stitch I started. And as you can see, it has numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So at this point in time, I have seven finishes that I did in January. That's pretty incredible. Uh, so I'm going to show you finishes number mm, six and number seven. I don't think I showed you before. Uh, I'm looking at six and thinking, oh yeah, that's bright colors. Okay, six and seven. And you will find out what this is going to spell out. It's going to be a word. You'll figure it out pretty fast. But for now, that's my start. And what I've done with this is I've actually done it in the colors of the cross stitches that I finished. So just to quickly review, I got all my finishes in this uh, uh, Ever Tote bag. So let me just grab them out here, oops, and I'll just quickly review. This will be the last time you have to see these finishes. Uh, so the first finish, where to go? Here it is. First finish as a quick reminder was this. It's uh, by uh, Victoria Samplers. And so from this, I just took the, the colors of the birch and the red. And so as you can see, I did, that's this one here. At first I mix, mixed the black and white and it came out really weird. And so then I went over top with some more white. So it doesn't quite fully represent. This was my next finish. And so I just took the greens and that's number two there. Number three was my Stitch North one. And you can see it only had two colors. So that was super easy. Number three. Number four was the spring one and so I just picked the pink and the blue number four number five was my wicked sibling so I picked out the orange and the green number five and now we get on to number six and number seven so let's grab out I don't believe I've shown you number six. And it's not even here. Where did I put number six? Oh, I know where it is. I'm going to get it from here. Where to go? I think you're in here. Are you in here? No, you're not. Okay, I'm going to pause. Now, I really probably shouldn't pause because I know people will, with some floss tubers like the time of searching around for the items and things like that um but anyway so number six um is this uh i will give you links eventually of where i got these i got these free um probably next time maybe i'll give you the link i can't remember it off the top of my head but it is a series I don't know if I have it right way up. I don't think I do. I think I think this is right way up. A series of flowers. And I don't know if people knew this, 
but there are like how there's birth gemstones there's also birth flowers and so for every month there is a birth flower so this is a carnation and uh my mother-in-law who passed last year her favorite flower was carnation she was born in january so now it all makes sense that obviously she knew about birth flowers or she just loved carnations but it was very special stitching this because I thought of her the whole time and I it was so therapeutic. I really, really enjoyed doing the stitch. So um, I love the way it turned out. So I have all 12 um, pieces of uh, fabric cut and serged. And um, so I'll be doing next uh, birth flower and uh, we'll get to that. I'm going to do um, at the end of this the what's coming up. But this was uh, my finish number six, the carnation. So isn't that just beautiful? I just love the way they uh, use the multiple colors and just the actual style of stitching. So very, very nice. And then, uh, let's see, where did I put that? Oh, I don't know. Okay, trying not to pause. I don't have the cover photo handy of this one, but this is finish number seven. It is the Tiny Modernist Moon Phase Bell Pole. So I'll just bring it in a bit so you can see. So I was getting, it's all the different moons, full moon, and then back down, and then a bunch of trees at the bottom. So it's hard to see um, it fully, but that's the Moon Phase Bell Pole by Tiny Modernist. It was a wonderful stitch. So this was part of my 24 hours cross stitch. I did finish this up during the 24 hours and then I worked on some others. So I was doing the 24 hours of cross stitch with the 24 hours cross stitch group, which is Jen Lee, Quirky Sti Quirks and Stitches. And so I did that on the weekend of, I think it was the 21st to 23rd. And essentially I stitched eight hours Friday, eight hours Saturday, eight hours Sunday to get the 24 hours. So that was a good challenge uh, and it worked. I did it. And then because I want to do 20, 24 hours in 2024, I was hoping that every 24th of the month that I would do a 24 hour consecutive uh, hours of cross stitch, which means that I, whenever I start, I have to stitch, you know, you get meal breaks, but stitch for 24 hours consecutive. And then when you're done, that's it. Uh, I'm actually much more productive when I do it over a weekend and you break it up in the multiple days, but I wanted the challenge of staying up. I have signed up for um, a competition or an event, um, a race of uh, 24 hours in June um, where you do a loop and it's like how much you can run or walk, how much distance you can get in 24 hours. So uh, part of training is I'm out walking, but also because I plan on walking this, not running it. Part of my other training is how long I can stay up. So this works in conjunction with that. If I can stay up 24 hours stitching, it helps getting the being alert and awake and staying up for past the sleeping time. And you know what? After I do 24 hours of cross stitching consecutive, I end up usually staying up quite a bit of time because I think this one I did from 9 p.m. to 9 p.m. But really I got up on the day it started, I got up at 7 a.m. So it was uh, 14 hours plus the 24, comes out to about 38 hours that I end up staying up awake. Um, but oh, I get the best sleeps after those. <laughs> it's like, it's amazing when you skip one night of sleeping, how well you'll sleep in the future. So it's almost like a reset. But anyway, so I, w I did that on January 24th. Um, started on the 23rd. I would finished around 9 p.m. on the 24th. Uh, I think I actually went to midnight because I had a couple of naps and so I felt it justified. I think I slept from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So I 
felt it justified to add a few extra hours. So instead of finish at 9 p.m., I finished at midnight. So it was kind of a consecutive kind of not. It was kind of a going to keep trying, going to keep working at it. But this was my first project I worked on. Then I worked on this one. So this is by Glendon Place, Sleepy Hollow. And there, I'll give you a little close-up of it. I worked on this, I think, in the early wee hours. And it was a challenge because it is, I'm not sure what count this, this fabric is. But it being mottled and just the style of it, the holes feel really small. It was really hard to see. And I had some errors. I did lots of frogging. But essentially what I did, and I'm missing some colors. I had this fully kitted and I must have been working on home and I didn't put back some colors into my bag. So I'm missing $37.99 right now. So I couldn't get to work too much. I couldn't finish his <laughs> Or I couldn't do something over here. Uh, but I did this pumpkin and I did finished off, oh, I think $37.99 is the border. I was going to do the border and just carry on, but that's actually $37.99. Finished off the, all this green work in here. And then I was going to start up on the horse here and work on the black, but my eyes were just getting buggy. So I called this one quits. I was trying to work, I think, eight hours on or six hours on four projects and I think I ended up only doing four hours on this but that's good enough so let's see what else we got um, and then I think I changed it completely up and my next project I worked on was my um, Hade 2024 cell which is astrology capped by uh, Chiro Machetti and uh, I'm just gonna put some of the fabric behind so that it doesn't so I work on this I'm gonna be working on this daily and uh, gonna try and get three pages done so the bottom of the first page is right about here I am at the bottom of the first page and I'm not quite sure where the the border is of this the page I think it's somewhere like right around there so I still have a ways to go to finish one page and we've been given three pages. Right now I'm just working on a big block of black and there's going to be another big block of black over there. But that is my astrology cat so far. And I have named him Galley Leo. Galley Leo. Yeah. Galley Leo. Galley Leo. So that's, that's astrology cat. So slowly progressing on this. I think I'm at 15% of the parts we got which is around 20,000 stitches so I think I, I'm not sure how many stitches I'm at right now but <laughs> I have a ways to go people have finished the three pages which is just shocking they're so fast but I guess they're also not trying to do 60 finishes in a year or so there's that too okay so I've been spending a lot of time on that um, I'm also doing don't think I have the cover photo, but I'm also doing Jimmy, who is my snow day project. Back home, they've had a few snow days, and so I have put a couple of days in on Jimmy. And I'm going to just pop him out of the hoop here so that you can get a full view of Jimmy, because he deserves it. So Jimmy is from Panna. It's the Christmas moose. And I'm just going to... I don't know if I've showed you my project bag recently. This is my project bag that Jimmy's in. Isn't it cute? That's a stitch that I did um, some time ago. I think it was a Riolis uh, called, I think it was called Black Cat. And then I made it into a project bag, just a sleeve style. My first project bag. <laughs> and it works out quite well. So here we go. Here's Jimmy. Look at Jimmy. So I now officially... Jimmy, we got to pull your, your threads over there. You're kind of looking a little sloppy there, buddy. Uh, I finished the, officially finished the rest of him down here, his shoulder and his ear. And now I am working on his other antler. So we're getting get, making progress on Jimmy. Look at Jimmy. And I really should be doing some of the um, back stitching as I go, but I haven't yet. I just can't, can't quite do it yet. Nope. 
no, don't, don't want to. So there's Jimmy. He's coming along. And I think there's a few more. So I'm doing snow days if they're back home at Freeport. I'm doing a snow day or if they're here back home in Nova Scotia or if they're here out on the West Coast. So don't know if we'll get any more here. We've been super warm. Uh, it's been um, what they used to call the Pineapple Express. Now it's called the Atmospheric River. Uh, essentially warm weather and rain. And so there's big concern about the snow melts and things like that. But uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of doubt if we'll get any more snow here. But they are getting snow back home in Nova Scotia. So uh, they had a big dump, I think, two days ago. And so I spent a long time on Jimmy and I think they got at least two or three more snow days coming. Okay, let's see what else I worked on. I got bags here. I worked on this. I think I worked on this. This is, um, I think it's called Futurecast. It is a Teresa Wentzler a freebie. Um, I might try to include, when I get home and I have the computer, I might try to include some links to some of this stuff, but this is going to be a dragon. It's the year of the dragon. So I'm trying to do um, four dragons on this piece of fabric, but it'll be, that's the start of his horns. And this is part of his tail. And so, and I've done a lot of the border. So I just got to finish up the dragon. I hope to finish him up by the end of March, but you, I don't know if you know, Teresa Wensler's, they are challenging. They are all these blends and lots of half stitches and for some reason this didn't really go into my pattern keeper very well and it's been a challenge it's really really a challenge but get what i can done and work on it i'll usually just spend a day or two on it each month so it got the time it was perfect to work on right before my 24 hours cross stitch because it was sort of just um what do you call like a puttering type project you know it's just sort of a slow stitch and you're not really getting lots of stitches in but you kind of just something to keep you kind of a little bit busy okay what else i think that's it doesn't seem like much but i think that's it so those were my finishes you saw my new start and now I'm going to tell you what's going to be coming up in February. So my plan is to have probably each month I want to have at least five finishes. Uh, so the five finishes that are planned out are like that tree that I showed you at the start. So I have the fabric already cut out for it. I will do it first. It is the smallest and I should be able to get it done in one or two days. So this one is going to be February's tree and it's called the Rowan or Mountain Ash. So I got it colors here somewhere. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is the color sport. So already all packaged up, ready to go for tomorrow. And then the next one I'm going to do is, uh, where'd the form go? Is that it? Yeah, this is it will be my seasonal plaid. And so I'm gonna do this one here, the Snowflake. This is by KEB Studio Creations. And this will be a fairly quick stitch too. This might only take uh, two days, I think, two, maybe three. So I got my piece of fabric already and my colors, only three colors. So that should go, just three colors of blue. So that should go really smoothly. And then, I also have picked out, so part of my whole process is, like we all do, I have lots of patterns or kits that I've accumulated, uh, collected, and so I had a list of all the ones that I want to stitch that I have, and some are just patterns I'm kidding up myself, and so I have them all listed and I spin the wheel, and so I'm doing two of those per month to try to work through my stash. So coming up in February, this is one that I'm going to be doing. I'll probably start this when I get home because I don't really have the floss here or the, oh, the lighting, the floss or the colors. But this is by Shakespeare's Peddler and it's called Throw, the, Throw Wide the Windows. 
So I still have to pick out the fabric and also pick out all the flosses. So I will do this when I get home. I brought it with me in case I wanted to kit it up here, but I don't think I will, uh, unless I really am in a time crunch. Uh, this I picked up at uh, Stitch North last year. So that's where I got this from. And the other pattern, let me see if I can find it. I always get confused on this one. I think, I don't think I can show you the pattern because I think it is the, okay. So I'm gonna do another, um, this is my flower series, the carnation, the flower of the month. These are all kitted up. I don't think I have the flosses with me for this. I don't think I brought them with me, but I'll search and see, but I don't think I did. So I might not be able to do that. I might have to wait till I get home on that, which is a shame because I really want to do it. Uh, let's see. I'm mean, finding everything that I meant to show you that I didn't show you. Here we go. Uh, so I'm just going to hold this back. This was a freebie we got at Stitch North and it's um, a Michelle Bendy um, design. And essentially it is a peacock and another bird uh, you can't see it there you go and it essentially says around the edges it says you should sit with us it's going to get weird <laughs> so that's kind of fun so i have the fabric and the uh, floss for that one so that will be before next video for sure and that's pretty small i think i'll be able to finish that off uh in the time before next time and then probably only two days on that i think i also picked this off the freebie table at stitch north and so this is uh, embroidery which i think always counts too and so i might this is a kit fully kitted not opened i might do this instead of that throw the windows wide open so that would give me my two out of my stash completed it was supposed to be marches but just because i didn't kit up the other one I'll just switch them out so that and then I have one more that I could get done into March which I might do I have to see if again I would have the floss for this uh, fabric I'd probably use I have one piece of fabric left over that I, that I thought that might go well it's all blacks and whites and there is one variegated type of green but I could pick any variegated to go on that but that would show up and it would still probably show up again because it's outlined by black. So this is by D's 20s, these 20s, 20 stitches. It's called Toonies, Toonies, isn't that cute? And so uh, here in Canada, for those that don't know, we have a loony, which is our dollar coin. And then they came out with a $2 coin, which we call Toonies. And so that's uh, the, the, the start of that. And then it's two little ducks. So that's really cute. So this would be my other option. And I can, you know, I can do more per month, get a little bit ahead of the game, it's fine. Uh, so that, that's another start I may do before I see you next. Um, and then I have also every month a planned finish from my whips. So I'm just gonna get up and get that one. Oops. Ow. Knees, 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 knees. Is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. Because I've done a lot of races in the past, this is a uh, one of the bags I'd get at races. So this was uh, for one of the races we did in Yarmouth. And the stitch in here is something I really want to get to. So I'm definitely, this is going to be, whether I'll get this finished before I see you next, we'll see, but I might, uh, is the ferret by um, A Year in the Woods by Cottage Garden Samplings, Cottage Garden Samplings, the ferret. I love this one. So, and I'm really close. So we'll just hold this up for you to see. I think I almost got this done before I left. There you go. So all I have left 
is a flower up on this side and the house in the background, the cottage in the background. So I only have this flower here and the cottage. So quite, quite close. So that also might be a finish before I see you next. So my goal going forward each month is to stitch on Jimmy if it's a snow day. And if it is, I just sort of stitch on it for the morning. Focus on my finishes, get my finishes done for the month. And then after I finish my finishes, then I will stitch the, I may stitch as I go the, the numbers on that, that uh, chart of my finishes. And then uh, I will um, work on something like Astrology Cat or one of my other projects, my more long-term projects. Oh, one other thing I worked on, and I did not bring it here, is my Whip and Sip, which is my um, Christmas wreath. So I will show you that next time. It's just, it's just a, a little Facebook group competition thing that I work on, just putting in at least 100 stitches a week. So it's... Uh, getting some progress. So is there anything else to show you? I don't think so. I think that's it for stitching. Life updates, I mentioned it briefly. So now uh, mom's coming along great. She's, uh, we're working, I'm going to be here for another three weeks. So you'll have one more floss tube from here. Uh, I, I'm, we're working at progressing her to be independent. So Right after I finish with you, we're going to, uh, she's walking with a walker and just doing like little loops around. Our house is like a duplex, so we have my section and then her section. Her section's all on one floor and mine's got an upstairs, which we're in right now. And so she'll be walking, we're connected with a uh, laundry room. And so she'll be walking through her place, through the laundry room, into my place, go around the island in the kitchen and then back into her place. So that's her walking. We've had a lot of rain here, so maybe once it gets sunnier and drier, we might adventure outside to see if she can walk like part of the street to just stretch out the walking a bit. She does get out of breath. Um, her endurance and her, um, yeah, she's older and, and she's had, she's been not very mobile for a year now, so it takes a little bit of work. She was amazing she um at i'm not sure i think 72 started running i uh i used to run a lot uh i did it for oh, when did i start i want to say in the 90s ish um maybe late 90s and ran a lot lot and uh, went long distances did a lot of marathons i think my marathon count was over 30 ish um, and that's all I focused on was running. And so when my mother, uh, my mother used to live out uh, east in Nova Scotia. And when her husband passed away, she moved out here to um, live with me. And then when she lived, moved out to live with me, uh, we, she would, she supported me fully in my running a lot and would come with me to the marathons. And one day she just out of the blue said she always wanted to run. And at that time I was teaching uh, running room clinics. And so I thought, well, I could teach her to run. And my thought was anybody can run. And so I uh, t started teaching her to run using the programs of the walk run programs and built her slowly up. And she went in her first 5K, then she went in her first 10K, and then she did half marathons. She ended up doing three half marathons. And she, one of them we did was in Atlanta, Georgia. It was the Jeff Galloway. It was the first year he was having a half marathon. And I'm a strong opponent of um, walk run. And I come from a walking background. We, when she was living here, well, when we were living together, we also did a lot of walking events. We belonged to Vogue Sporting. We would walk every weekend. And eventually we decided to walk across England and we went to Nijmegen, which was a multi-day walking festival, did a lot of walking. So, you know, she was fit. She's very fit. So in her 70s, she did three half marathons. They, they were like a year or two years apart, but she did great. And it wasn't till I moved away, she slow, start, stopped sort of running and then the, she has osteoarthritis. So her... Um, all the joints are 
the bone is wearing away. And uh, so she's, you know, she's now 87, I believe, or 88, yeah, 87. And so uh, she's now struggling. Uh, she was in a lot of pain before the knee or the hip surgery. So she's had one knee replaced so far and two hips replaced. Uh, but we're gonna work at trying to get her back walking. If she can walk without a walker, that'd be great. If she has to use a walker for the rest of her life, so be it. So right now I'm just working at getting her to be a little independent. Um, and yeah, that's uh, where we do extra, she does exercises right after this, we're gonna go for the walk around in the house and then she'll do her exercises, her strengthening exercises. And she does that three times a day. And right now I get her all her meals and um, help her getting dressed and help her with whatever she needs. So I'm mostly just living in her place. Um, but I'm leaving in three weeks, so we have to work at getting her independent too. So the other thing I'm doing is training that, like I told you, I'm going to be doing a 24 hour uh, uh, race, which is a loop. I think it's a 4.6K loop. And you just do, it's out in Nova Scotia in a place called Wentworth. Um, and it's my first time doing this one. I've done other 24 hours. I've done, I think around seven different 24 hour events. My best uh, distance was 130 kilometers. And my worst distance I think was like 95 kilometers. So I'm aiming for a hundred kilometers. Now I haven't been doing a lot of distance training at all. And I'm not running because right now I don't feel confident running. My my body is just not prepared for it. Um, I have a, some back issues and such. I'm not ruling out. I won't run ever again. I'm probably going to start doing some running to get faster at orienteering. But for now, for long distance walking is plenty. And so I'm gonna. I'm right now training with doing some long distance walking. So. So far, I've gone out and done four training walks, and they're, my max distance right now is about 13 kilometers. Uh, so this weekend, I just did a 12K on one day and then 13K on the next day. So that was uh, good training. And uh, this weekend coming up, I'll start to bop it up. So I'm um, picking each month a goal. So January's was 10Ks. Uh, February's, I'm gonna try to do some 20Ks, maybe four 20Ks in the month and then 30k is the next one so on so on build up to 50k if i can get to 50k on back-to-back -back days 50k one day 50k the next day i feel i'll be quite well trained for going into doing 100k in a 24-hour period that's my goal so balancing cross stitching balancing orienteering will be starting up in april and balancing some training walks but right now here i've got to take advantage of this mild weather knowing that it's snow covered in nova scotia and get my training in here so it's good motivation uh, knowing what the weather's like back there so that's about it uh, and it gives me a bit of a break from the caretaking so no matter how much you love the person you're caretaking you really really need to take some time for yourself too so it's been super important for me to go for walks and to just have that me time the cross stitching gives me a lot of me time too and and it was good doing the 24 hours of cross stitching um you know i still made all the meals and everything etc but I was also being able to, you know how it is with cross stitching, it's a little bit meditative taking that time to stitch away and to focus on what you love. It really is. But speaking of loving, oh, I can't wait to get home. That's, that's, it's coming up three weeks, but it is still three weeks. Been counting down the days. I've been here now for, I think, 52 days. That's a long time. It'll have been, yeah, it'll be a long time in the end, close to almost uh, two and a half months. Uh, long time. But I will get home. I will be home. And it, it will come. So you've seen what's coming up. You've seen what I've done. And you will, you know all my life updates. And I will be seeing you in two weeks. Uh, so... Take care, everybody. Have happy stitching. I hope uh, you're all getting in some good X's and enjoying life. And we'll talk to you in two weeks.
Bye.